Hey everybody, I'm Richard, this is Lap of the World, and today we're gonna talk about why the next modification to your track car should be data. When it comes to modifying your car for track use, the instant gratification from tires, coilovers, cams, or headers is hard to ignore. But in the long term, if you look at how professional teams run their shops, the story often starts and ends with data, either logged or real-time information about vehicle and driver performance that they use to inform car development and race strategies. Many of you may remember that we came away from Science of Speed last year with some added displacement behind us, but that's not what we're talking about today, because we also came away with a lot more information in front of us. And the data that we now have up here is going to be critical in informing if and how we modify the car going forward, as well as potentially modifying the driver a little bit as well. So let me show you what we have and how we're gonna use that to potentially tell us what we may need to do to the car, and also how I may use it to try and tighten the nut behind the wheel a little bit as well. What you're looking at here is an AEM CD7 race dash, thinly disguised behind a later year factory NSX navigation pod. SOS offers a few treatments for the CD7, including one that replaces your factory instrument cluster, but we opted for this approach to retain a more original looking interior and our ever ascending odometer while still taking advantage of the tech on offer. Given our early production NSX is pre-OBD2, this approach nets us a lot of information that would otherwise not appear on the factory instrument cluster or be available to us via simpler means. From the ECU, we capture and display the tachometer feed, coolant temperature, and throttle position. A 20 hertz GPS gives us a vehicle speed indication and beacon-driven lap timing information. SOS then added sensors to feed the display real-time oil temperature at the pan, as well as oil pressure. The stock NSX oil pressure gauge is well known to be heavily damped, this one samples at 100 times a second. In addition to what's displayed, we now also log GPS position and heading data, at least two axes of G-load from an accelerometer, and the digital state of the brake light switch to track pedal actuation with the option to add more channels in the future if needed. So, what does this all mean in practical terms? One of the immediately obvious benefits is that I can see what's going on with oil temperature and oil pressure in real time something that I've been uh, acutely interested in since a failure in one of those metrics cost us a lot of money in 2022. But it's more than that. With a race dash that is essentially always logging, we can look at big snapshots of data now while the engine is fresh and then reference that down the road to potentially troubleshoot. It also means we can see where the oil and or cooling systems may struggle at times. As a recent case study, the Texas heat at our recent trip to G2 Motorsports Park as part of NS Expo 2024 certainly found some limitations. But because we had data, we knew when our oil temperatures were reaching questionable levels and therefore when to take a cool down lap. We also now know that oil temperature management is currently the limiting factor in how much fun we can have on a hot day at a track. I corroborated with both Chris from SOS and the inimitable John Vassos that keeping things under 260 F in an NSX is advisable and we approached that a couple of times. Notably, this is the same oil and viscosity that we were running in Arizona in 2022 in hotter ambient conditions at a track that probably had the car at a higher average RPM. Had we had more information at the time, we may have been able to avoid pushing the oil in an aging engine outside its effective envelope. So yeah, knowing what your oil is doing in a car that you're asking a lot of is pretty important. And most cars, even many performance-oriented models, don't give you all of the information on the stock instruments. I noted while watching my in-car lap recordings that while the oil temperature continued to climb throughout a session, the coolant temperature would sort of stabilize and then not go much of anywhere. So what that means is that the coolant temp gauge on the cluster really isn't telling us the whole story. That knowledge could point us in a couple of directions with modifications in deciding if and how we may want to try and bolster our oil cooling capacity, or in what weather conditions we may want to temper our enthusiasm a bit in the meantime. In other cars, this level of data may expose different challenges, but the core benefit will be the same, giving you the opportunity to get ahead of them rather than be victimized by them seemingly at random later. Track time is expensive, and the more you know, the more you can maximize your seat time investment. Speaking of track days, having all of these extra data streams also means that my track video overlays can go from looking like this to looking like this. 
And while I do value the lift and production quality for my Just the Laps videos, that's not the main benefit to me as a creator driver. For one, it's accountability. There won't be any more hiding behind the camera or from myself when I lift for what should have been a flat kink, and that will help me self-correct some feel versus real disconnects with my driving. With the entertaining for you downside of my mediocrity being on full display, the upside is that behind each of those colorful overlays is a squiggly line in a data log. Driving coaches love squiggly lines, so in addition to what I can glean on my own, I could now also share logs with folks who really know what they're doing so they can tell me how I can be less average. A coach or race engineer could look at these traces and tell me where I'm over slowing, where I'm braking too early or not enough, when my transitions from brake to throttle or throttle to brake are too slow, or any number of other things that are probably costing me tenths, if not whole seconds, on my quest to be a more competent wheelman than your garden variety car tuber. That is going to be an interesting journey on its own for which we'll try to bring you along, but is out of scope for this video. The short version is that data is super helpful in improving your craft as a driver, and much of what we are getting from our race dash we could not have gotten from a lap time or phone app or similar given our lack of OBD2 source. Of course, many of you out there are going to be tracking more modern cars that are OBD2 equipped and potentially have a full suite of sensors, including oil temperature, oil pressure, maybe even brake pressure already on board, in which case you have more options. You might be able to get away with an OBD2 dongle that outputs to a standalone data logger or potentially even a premium phone app in some cases. However, for myself and many of the rest of you out there who are tracking or horsing around with pre-OBD2 cars, the Race Dash is an excellent solution to getting the, the data that you need to either see what your car is doing, inform modifications, and or do a little bit of... Uh, you know, self-driver coaching when you can. <laughs> but with that said, uh, I think that's where we're going to leave it for today. A uh, reminder, this is not a sponsored video. We paid for all this stuff, but we do want to thank SOS for the very clean installation and initial setup of the AEM CD7, as well as throwing a shout to Mita Motorsports, who helped us source the clean version of the nav pod that basically isn't labeled as a nav pod. That's a personal preference, but they came through for us. And uh, yeah. So we hope you found the video informative, if not entertaining. If you did, uh, please don't remember to, uh, or don't remember, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment. Let us know if you have any questions. But uh, that's where we're going to leave it for today. So until next time, I'm Richard. This is Lap of the World, and we'll see you, all of you in the next video, if not at the track.